Thing. Order! Order! You are an incorrigible delinquent at times. <laughs> Behave yourself, man! The Chancellor George Osborne was pressured to release a summary of his tax return today after Number 10 called for greater transparency at the top of the government. As the Prime Minister stood up to face MPs for the first time since the Panama Papers were published, the Labour leader also followed suit revealing his own tax return. David Cameron insisted the unprecedented step should not be a requirement for all MPs. He told the House, aspiration and wealth are not dirty words. Our political correspondent editor, Gary Gibbon, joins us now from Westminster. Gary. Well, what did we really learn today? We learnt, if you didn't know already, that George Osborne is comfortably off. He gets an income from renting his London home. He gets shares from a family firm that's been reporting losses uh, for a while. Uh, on Jeremy Corbyn, we learnt that he has, relative to quite a few MPs, really not much income on top of his MPs' income. And on David Cameron, we learnt that uh, he got rid of the shares in his father's uh, unit trust uh, quite a few months before he got rid of all the others, which I think would suggest to some people that maybe even in terms of perception he knew something uh, didn't quite look right there. Um, we also learnt, I think, that we're moving towards some sort of American-style disclosure democracy, where you have to um, fess up what's uh, in your books if you want to have high office. And we learnt, if we didn't know it already, that an awful lot of MPs hate that direction of travel and think that they are effectively uh, being accused of being part of some sort of corrupt uh, leadership, uh, corrupt political elite by implication. Here's how the day here went. Both occupants of Downing Street say they've now revealed all and come squeaky clean on their incomes. David Cameron's produced six years of income figures. George Osborne today published his personal accounts for last year. Thank you, Mr. The Prime Minister told the Commons like to make he should have done it earlier. Mr Speaker, I accept all of the criticisms for not responding more quickly to these issues last week. But as I've said, I was angry about the way my father's memory was being traduced. I know he was a hard-working man and a wonderful dad, and I'm proud of everything he did to build a business and provide for his family. George Osborne's figures show that on top of his salary, he got nearly £80,000 from share dividends in the family's UK-based wallpaper business and rental of his London home. Well, I'm the first Chancellor ever to publish details of my tax return. I will continue to do so in the future. And it confirms what people already know and what's been publicly known for many, many years, which is that I get a salary as Chancellor of the Exchequer. I get a rental income from the home in London that I rent out while I live in Downing Street. And I also get dividends from my family's manufacturing business. Aware that many MPs dread having to do the same sort of declaration Mr. he'd Speaker, just done, David Cameron said he thought this sort of transparency had probably as gone as about far enough. If this were to come in for MPs, people would also ask for a similar approach for those who ask us questions, those who run large public services or lead local government, or indeed those who edit the news programmes or newspapers. I think this would be a very big step for our country. It certainly shouldn't take place without a long and thoughtful debate, and it is not the approach that I would recommend. Jeremy Corbyn published his tax return for last year, showing 1,800 income for work like speeches on top of his MP's salary. The form shows he filed late, and his office confirmed he was fined £100. Labour leader said David Cameron's statement was a masterclass in the art of distraction. Does he realise why people are so angry? Does he realise, do members opposite realise why people are so angry? We've gone through six years, six years of crushing austerity. Families lining up at food banks to feed their children. Disabled people losing their benefits. Elderly care cut and slashed. Living standards going down. Much of this could have been avoided if our country hadn't been ripped off by the super-rich refusing to pay their taxes. One of Jeremy Corbyn's allies attacked David Cameron with unparliamentary language he knew would get him thrown out of the chamber. This man has done more to divide this nation than anybody else. He's looked after his own pocket. I still refer to him as Dodgy Dave. 
do what you like. I order the honourable member to withdraw immediately from the House. Dennis Skinner walked out. One Tory suggested many people would be put off trying to come here if scrutiny of their affairs got more intrusive. We risk seeing a House of Commons which is stuffed full of low achievers who hate enterprise, hate people who look after their own family and who know absolutely nothing about the outside world. MPs who wish that had been expressed a bit more sensitively agreed to the general drift. Gary Gibbon, Gary, um, has this put the business to bed? Is this issue now dead? Well, they hope so. That was the idea of throwing everything at it as they saw it. But uh, every time they've tried to draw a line under this story in the last few days, uh, the story has jumped the line. You cannot underestimate how much uh, David Cameron pays a bit of a price with his own backbenchers by tipping, tripping down this path of uh, greater disclosure. You cannot underestimate just how much they really, really don't like this. They feel the constituencies, even if he's there saying, no, 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 we don't want it to go any further, just the Prime Minister, just the Chancellor, they think that will creep on to uh, being the Foreign Secretary, the man responsible for overseas uh, uh, territories. It could be uh, a Treasury Minister responsible for tax. Before you know it, it'll be everyone in the Cabinet. Before you know it, it'll be everyone running for office. And some of them are already saying that they're hearing from constituencies uh, that there will be pressure on them to disclose their affairs in the run-up to the next election. You can easily imagine a local paper or a rival candidate putting the pressure on easy as that.